Hey there, I'm Joe Weems. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you about NGConf 2023 happening in Salt Lake City, Utah on June 14th and 15th. Head over to ngconf.org to check out the speakers, check out the talks, and to get your ticket before they all sell out. We'll see you there. Good morning, welcome everyone. So today I'm gonna to talk about content projection and more specifically we're gonna see how to become a content projection artist. So what I mean by this is that we're gonna see quite a few different techniques that you can use with Angular to create reusable components that use content projection. So before I get started, just a few words about myself. My name is Alan or just Al. I'm a Google developer expert in web technologies, more specifically Angular, of course, and I've been working with Angular forever. <laughs> I started back in 2011, before version 1.0, and yeah, I fell in love with the framework because, I mean, back then, I was doing jQuery, JavaScript kind of stuff, and when AngularJS came out, it was just a revolution. So, I uh, fell in love with Angular, I've been working with it pretty much on a daily basis since then. And uh, as Lucas mentioned, I do a lot of training, consulting. My website is angulartraining.com. I have a blog there where I post at least once a month. And I'm based in Sacramento, California, where I organize the Angular Meetup Group and the Google Developer Group Sacramento. So that's me. Now, what about the audience. So we're gonna do a quick show of hands about, so first question, who is using Angular material or another component library these days? Okay, that's a lot of people, probably over 50, 60%, that's pretty good. Now who is building or planning on building their own library of reusable components? Okay, that's, that's also a lot of people, pretty good. And last one is, who is new or newish to Angular and or web development? That's a lot less people. <laughs> All right, perfect. So with this talk, I start from scratch. I like to teach from scratch, assuming that you don't know anything about any of this. So we start from the basics and we're gonna build from there up to the point where even if you already know quite a bit about content projection, you'll be able to hopefully learn a few things. So these slides, we're gonna see a lot of code examples. We're gonna see a lot of different exercises, links and stuff. So I suggest you scan this, uh, uh, this barcode or type that URL on a laptop or phone and you're gonna be able to access all of the links. We're gonna have a few exercises, three of them. We only have one hour so it's kind of short to really get hands-on and practice a lot, but we, we'll try to do a little bit of that uh, during this session. So giving you a few seconds to scan this. I see a few phones are up. All right, looks like we're good. So first things first, why do we need content production? What can it do for us? So if we want to have truly reusable components, it's important to build them in a way that they are as generic as possible, meaning that you can really customize what's gonna be displayed in that component. So customization, for instance, here we have a card component. Within a card component, you can put pretty much anything, right? So we have to be able to change the title, the description, the image, or put any sort of thing in, in here. So it has to be really super generic, not tied to any business logic at all. So very often when I say this, people tell me, hey, but we can use inputs in Angular, right? I could use inputs to pass a title, to pass a description and an image, and then I would just display those in the component. 
And of course, inputs work in many cases. If you have simple scenarios, like a menu or chips or a snack bar, where all we need to pass as a parameter to that component is a string or an image or something pretty simple, not dynamic, that doesn't require any angular stuff like components or directives or pipes, um, this could be a good, good option. But the thing is, in real life, we have more complex components than this. And if we start talking about a dialog, a data table, an expansion panel, those, pretty much everything inside the component is going to be custom, right? Every, the table, all of the rows, all of the columns are going to be different in every single use case. So we have to make those completely generic. And that's what we're going to do with content production. So let's get started with option number one, which is going to be the nominal case for content projection with Angular. So we're going to do a, a dialog, a pop-up window component. And the idea is that the title and the body of the dialog should be anything we want, so that we can reuse that component over and over again in different scenarios. So the idea is we have a parent component. A parent component displays the pop-up window, and within the content uh, section of the component, we pass some text in here. And this, in, in this scenario, it's just text, but it could be another component, it could be a big template with lots of HTML, doesn't matter, you can pass anything you want. And that content is gonna be projected into the child component using the ng content directive. So you can see that ng content directive pretty much like a router outlet when you use the router. It's very similar in the sense that it's gonna take some piece of template and display it in that place. So in a sense, it's as if we cut the content from the parent component and paste it into the child component where we have that ng content directive. So we can see that in action. And if you got the link to my slides, all of these blue uh, demo are actually links. So if you click on it, you would land on here on StackBlitz, where there is a live example, which is exactly what I just mentioned. So we have the pop-up window component, and this component is driven by an input, is open. If is open is true, then the pop-up is gonna show up. If it's false, it's gonna go away, nice and easy. And we just have a button here to trigger show pop-up equals true. So when I click on that button, there you go, my pop-up shows up, and the content here is coming from that uh, content from, from the parent. So this is the content that gets projected. If I change the content in here, this is the content, and I click on show pop-up again, that's my new content being displayed. So in the template of that child pop-up window, that's where we have the ng content. So that's where the content gets projected. So pretty simple. All we need in the end is ng content. We use that directive in our code, and, and then everything else is going to happen automatically. So this is pretty good. But the thing is, real life is always more complex than this. And most of the time, we need to pass not just one thing to the child component, but many different things, like a body and a header and a footer and maybe even more. So that's what we're going to do next. We are going to use a multi-slot content projection, which sounds super complex, but it's not. <laughs> the name is more scary than, than it actually is. The idea is that instead of having one ng content, we're going to have two or three or four or more. And each of these ng contents is going to have a way to select a specific template to, to project in, in here. So in the case of my example, we're going to have two things that we pass to that pop-up window, the body 
so same thing as before. And we're going to add another, another slot, another piece of content that we project, and that's the footer. So we can add buttons and actions inside of it. So to do this, we're going to use multiple ng contents. And each of these ng contents is going to have a query. So it has a select attribute, which is going to decide which, um, which element to get from the parent component based on the CSS selector that we pass as a parameter. So you can use any sort of CSS selector. The first one up here is an attribute selector. So it would select any element that has attribute selector as an attribute. So that's the case for the paragraph down here. It has attribute selector. The second example is selecting by CSS class. This is a CSS class selector. So it would match the div down here with a class of CSS class selector. And the last one is a more complex selector where I can use any you know, any CSS selection syntax that I want. Um, so select a, select a div that has uh, a class content and an attribute first. So basically a combination of all of the three uh, different selectors, and that would select the div down here. So you can get really fancy on how you select those elements that you want to project. So that's going to be our first exercise for today. If you want to give it a try, uh, we'll spend a few minutes on, on this one. Um, so you can start from the URL up here, and it's going to open Stack Blitz, and you'll see the, the previous example where we project just one thing from parent to child. And the goal is going to be to change the pop-up window component so it can accept two different um, two different things that we, that we project into it. So we're going to do five minutes on this one. I'm going to start a timer for five minutes to get you started. And after that, we'll take a look at the solution, and we're going to move on to the next things. Can we see the time up here? Yeah, four minutes, 50 seconds. All right, just a few more seconds, and there we go. That's the end of the timer. So who is able to get it done in five minutes? I know it's fast. Oh, it's pretty good. We have quite a few people around the room. Nice. So I'm going to show you the code uh, behind this. Oops. There we go. This one is the one I want to show you. So the idea is that in the parent component, now we're going to have two different blocks that we want to project in the child component. So these two blocks, in my case here, I decided to to give them uh, specific attributes, body and footer. And then in the child component where we want to project that content, we're going to have two different ng contents. The first one is going to select the element from the parent that has an attribute equal to body. And the second one is going to use an attribute equal to footer. And if you do that, then you'll be able to project these two divs from the parent to the child in these two different places. And of course, you can apply that idea to as many elements as you want. So let's take a look. That's my new parent component. We have a div. Oh, I used IDs in that solution. Yeah, why not? just to make things a little bit different. And here I selected my ID. And when I show the pop-up, we do have these two things being projected. So the body div gets projected in the body ng content right there, and the footer gets projected down there. 
So pretty good. So that's what we call multi-slot content projection. And with just that, you can achieve a lot of reusability. You can really make components that are pretty generic. Now let's dive into option number three, which is going to be dynamic content projection with ng template. So the thing with multi slot content projection is that it works, but you have to know upfront how many, how many things you're going to project. And, and the number of items that you can project is kind of hard coded in a way, it's not dynamic. So if we don't know how many items we're going to need to project, then we need to, to go to that next step and instead uh, use ng template. So the example we're going to take for this is uh, using creating a tabs component. We want to create a tabs component where we can have one tab, two tabs, ten tabs, we don't know. It's just going to depend on the use case. So this is going to change over time. This is going to depend on what we want to do with that component. So to achieve this, we are going to use ng container and ng template. So what is ng container? It's just a way, it's a placeholder element that we can have in our Angular templates where we're going to display a template later on. So it's a little bit like ng content in a sense, and we can pass a reference to a specific template that we're going to display in it. And that reference can change over, over time. We can change it to a different template later on to swap the view with something different. And that view is going to be an ng template. So we have an example of ng template down here. It's an element that's going to contain an HTML template that's going to be rendered in a container. And by default, an ng template is not visible. So if you put ng template like this in a component, it's not going to show up. It's not going to be rendered in the DOM. It's only going to render when Angular needs it and when Angular does something with it, such as displaying it in a container. So in the case of our, uh, our tabs, what we want to do is um, is really have multiple tabs that we can render on the screen. So one, two, three, or more. And when we click on these tabs, of course, the content that we display on the, in the main area here in that main container is going to be different. So let's take a look at the starting code for this. We have app component. And the idea would be that in that types component, we can pass as many, um, as many templates as needed. So here I have just one, but I could have 10 of them. All of those would be the content that we display in here for those tabs. And at the top, so the tabs components themselves, they are going to be, the tabs are buttons. So what we see up here at the top, these are simple buttons. And we have that ng container that's going to display one of the templates in here. And the idea is when we click on the button, we want to swap that template with the one for tab one, tab two, tab three. So that's what we want to achieve in here. So I'll let you give it a try. I know this one is slightly more tricky than the first one. So we'll do the same thing as before. We'll start a five minute timer. And we'll take a look at this in five minutes. Oh yeah. I know five minutes is not enough for this one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely a little bit more complex. So we got to the end of the timer. Let's take a look at how we can make this happen. So the two requirements that we have, the first thing we want to be able to do is have multiple tabs. So an easy approach would be to just have an array of tab names that we pass as an input. Because inputs are easy to use and we would just pass that. So in that case we have three tabs, we pass an array with tab one, tab two, tab three. And then inside 
the um, the content we would pass we would pass three different templates. So first ng template for the first tab, second ng template for the second tab, third ng template for the third tab. Now the thing when we pass templates as a uh, as a parameter in the content like this is that we have to be able to query them. We have to be able to select them. And one common way to, to do this with Angular is to use a directive. So we're going to use a, what is known as a marker directive, which only purpose is really to, to put a name on these templates. So we, we created a, a sample directive which does nothing at that point. It just it just has a selector of tab and that's all it does. And we're going to apply it on all of these ng templates. Which is going to enable us to do the following thing. So now in our tabs component, we have an input with the array of names. So that's the names of our tabs. And we're going to use content children. So that's a decorator that's going to query the content to find all of our templates. We're going to select all of the children that have the tab directive. That's a directive that we just saw that is a way to tell us which, comp which uh, templates to select. And it's going to give us a query list of all of these templates. And the last thing we're going to do in that tabs component is have a way to store what is the current tab, what is the current selection from the user, where did the user last click. So current tab is going to be one of these template references. And finally, in the template of the tabs component, so we're going to repeat our button for each and every tab using ng4, of course. Names, again, is our input, where we pass that array of all of the tabs we want to have. And what we're going to do is when we click on that button, this is the key thing. That's what's going to allow us to switch those templates based on the button we click on. Um, we change the current tab by getting, so using the index of the button we clicked on, we get the template from the query list of all of the templates. So templates dot get index i. And that template is going to become the current tab, which then is the one that we render in the container using ng container and the ng template outlet property to set that current tab. So once you know the mechanism, it's it's not too bad. It just relies on a couple of tricks that we have to be aware of. And then it works. So let's take a look. So in my example, I have four tabs here. That's because I have an array of names, tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four. And I'm passing four templates that are just basic text. But again, they could be anything. Could be using components in here. Could be using images. Any sort of complexity uh, would be possible in that scenario. So that's the, the API of my tabs component, which is easy to read, I guess. Makes sense that a tabs component would look like this from a, a usage perspective. And the HTML that we just talked about. So clicking on these buttons is going to select one of the templates and display it. So if I click on tab one, we see content for first tab. So it got the first template in the list and it set it in the ng container down here. And of course, it's going to work with all of them. So if I click on two, second tab, third tab, last tab, you get the, the idea. And if I want to add a new one, I could do it that way. Just take that ng template, add another one to the end. Fourth tab is here, last, and I'm going to pass. So the, the part that is not ideal about that solution is that 
the title seen here, they have to be in sync with the number of templates that I pass. So if I make a mistake, I'm pr probably going to break things. I did tab five in here. It's available. I click on it. Content for last tab. If I use tab four, yeah, it's working. So now we're going to improve that solution a little bit using some Angular tricks. Because Angular in the templates, there, there are a lot of different syntax things that we can do that uh, uh, some are very well known, some a little bit more obscure. Uh, but the thing is, when you use them, it can simplify your code quite a little bit. So that's what we're going to get into right now. So the part that I don't like about my solution from a few minutes ago is that we have to pass all of the names of the tabs as an input. And that's not ideal. We can make mistakes. And yeah, it is just error prone. So why not, um, why not have, have those names directly on my ng templates? That way, the name is fully tied to that template. It's explicit what, what we are doing. And yeah, there's no room for mistakes anymore. So we're going to remove that input, and instead, it's going to be an input down here on the tab directive. Because the thing is, we have that tab directive that we created as a marker directive, but we don't do anything in that directive. At least we didn't so far. Now we can change that to actually have a name input on the directive itself. So it's going to read that value and use it. So if we make those changes, now the tab directive would have an input to receive the name, which is the text we display on uh, the tab at the top. Uh, we're going to have ng4 that's going to iterate through, uh, through our tabs. So this, doesn't, this changes because initially we would iterate over the names. Now we are iterating over the tabs themselves, so the, the different templates that we got. And we read the input from the directive, tab.name. So no more relying on an, an array that's not connected to any of this. And in order to get, so the only thing that I have to do here, and that's not optimal just yet, is to have another content children to select uh, all of my tab directives, not as a template, but as a directive. So you can see that initially we would use content children to read the template references. So that's the syntax here. Uh, content children tab directive read the template ref. This gives us the ng template um, that is uh, that uh, that has a directive applied to it. And the second content children is selecting the directives themselves. So we have two content children. We're going to get rid of one of those later, but just to each go step by step, that's uh, the solution at that point. And the code is going to be, the API is now a little bit easier to read because the names of the tabs are linked to the templates, so that's, that's cleaner, that's easier from an API perspective. And it still works, so that's pretty good. Now we can sim simplify even more. Um, ng templates, we, we could possibly remove that and use a different syntax. And we saw that now we have two different content children decorators. We can get rid of one to have just, just, uh, just one of those. And if you're being perfectionist, it might be better to not have a name input in here but rather have something that looks like the syntax down here. So we could simplify things further. Instead of having ng template tab name equals first tab, we would have just div star tab equals first tab. That looks a little bit better, less code, um, more readable, and that way we can tell right away that the text is linked to the tab directive that we have right here. So how can we make that happen? We can because 
um, in Angular templates, we have that uh, syntactic sugar that is available on all directives. We actually use it every day. Most of the time, we don't know about it. We don't pay attention to it because we always use a shorthand syntax for our directives, like ngif, ng4, ngswitch. Um, typically, you would use star ngif and not the syntax that we see down here, right? Most likely, you're going to use the first syntax, not the second one. But the thing is, the two are actually equivalent. And the syntax at the top here is uh, the shorthand syntax, which is actually going to be expanded by Angular into that ng template syntax. So if we look at our code from earlier, we're basically using the expanded syntax here by default. And I could rely on that syntax trick to turn it into the shorthand syntax, because it doesn't just apply to ngif, ng4, ngswitch, or all of the Angular directives. It can apply to our own custom directives as well. So we're going to do this so we can simplify that syntax. So that's one of the tricks that we are going to implement. And this is going to be our final exercise for today. So. If you want to give it a try, the URL is right there. I'll put a five minute timer. That's the last one for today. And I'll let you get started. So basically, we want to use the syntax from uh, the previous slide, put it in place, make sure that uh, everything still works. And uh, and then we're going to remove one content children. This one is more of a bonus step. If you don't do it, that's, that's fine, because it, it, is, it may be a little bit more tricky. All right, so we reached the end of that timer. So any success with the final exercise? Oh, yes, we do. That's good. Pretty nice. So. Let's take a look at the changes we make to our code for this final exercise. So we want the tab directive to, um, to get the name, to read the, the name input without actually using a different name for that input. So that's something we can do with uh, the input decorator. You can pass a parameter to it, and that parameter is the name of the HTML attribute we, can actu we want to read the value from. So in our case, since we want to read that value from the tab itself, we just use the same, um, same value as the selector itself. So the selector of the directive is tab, and the input is read from that same tab attribute. And that way, we, we kill two birds with one stone, really. And, uh, and the input is, uh, uh, is applied to the same HTML attribute. The second trick we use in that directive is that we inject the template reference directly in the directive itself. This is what's going to enable us to remove one of the content children query because now the directive itself is going to have a reference to its template. So we don't have to query that template separately, uh, separately in, uh, in the tabs component. So these two things here are easy to write when you know about them. Um, it's pretty concise, and it achieves quite a lot of interesting behavior. So now the directive, when we apply it someplace, it's going to have a reference to its own templates, and it's going to be able to read the, the name from the tab attribute as well. So this simplifies our tab component down here. We just have one content children at that point where we use tab directive as a selection criteria, and in tabs component HTML. Now we are using our two public properties from the directive, the template. So when we click on the button, we read the template from the tab directive itself. 
and the name that we display on the button, same thing, comes from the public property name of the tab directive. So a directive that was initially just a marker directive to, to know which template to select is, has become a lot more powerful with these two lines of code uh, because now we can have a more lo logic in here and, uh, and this simplifies our API quite a little bit. So yeah, at that point, the tabs component looks like this. And yeah, it's basically as minimalist as possible. We cannot remove any more information at that point. At least, I don't think so. We just have everything that we need. The three divs that are going to be displayed in here, the name that goes with each one of them, no more ng templates. Um, yeah, looks pretty good from a, an API user, an API consumer standpoint. And in the tabs component, the nice thing is that we actually have less code at that point that we had earlier in all of these components and directives. So just one content children that makes that query release to select the elements. The current tab is still a template ref in here. And in tabs component HTML, now we rely on the tab directive for everything. So to repeat the buttons at the top, and when we click on those buttons, we get the template from the directive itself. We set it to the current tab, which again is going to change what gets displayed in the ng container. So these are some of the tricks that any component library is going to use, basically, and allows you to achieve reusability, allows you to have a dynamic component. So these tabs, not these ones, but the, the current solution here is generic enough so you could, uh, you could do pretty much anything you want at that point. Only thing we don't have is the ability to make the names more dynamic using components and such, but that would be more complex. We could, using, using similar ideas, achieve that as well. So last thing I want to talk about is accessing context from the host component. That's something that we don't use very often, but if you use this component libraries like Angular Material, it's a trick that they use quite a bit, especially when you use the, the table components and such. Um, you, you have to, to pass that context and, um, and use it within the templates. So how does it work? The way it works, or the, the feature that we want to achieve is that um, we want to pass a, comp a, a template from the parent to the child, but we want the child to decide what to render in that template, to have an expression that is going to display data that comes from the host component itself. So what we mean by this is the following. In our tabs component, let's say the third tab is going to display a title um, expression, but that title doesn't come from the parent component. Instead, it's going to come from the child. So we want to pass a generic template with generic expressions that are going to be filled out by uh, the consumer, the, the component that's going to display that template in the end. So that's how the context is being passed here. In the child component, we would create a context object like this. So ctx equals title, this is some context. And then in order to pass that context to the container, to the template outlet, we set context to ctx. So it's going to pass that object here which is going to make title available, and then we, we can use that expression and render it uh, from the template passed from the parent. So this is a rarer use case, but it's one of the things we have in the toolkit with content production, ng template, ng container. 
So we can see it in action here. Let's click to the app component. That's my third tab. You see that third tab is displaying this title here. This is content from the tabs component itself. And that string, even though the expression is in app component HTML, the string comes from the context in tabs component.ts. So that's where we pass that title that gets displayed up here. So with all of this, you have a toolkit to be a content production artist. Now I know it's, it takes some practice to get used to it. Um, the last one here, this one, I probably spent like an hour to get it to work properly. <laughs> so <laughs> even when you know what you're doing, it can get really tricky uh, because there's a lot of you know, syntax things to be aware of. Uh, but yeah, content production is, is fun. Uh, once you have practice with it, once you have built a few components, it becomes a lot easier. And, uh, and then, you know, with just a few lines of code, these examples are not too crazy. I, I never have more than 20 lines of code per file, so it's pretty compact. Uh, and we achieved component reusability. So that's, that's perfect. So conclusion. We have many features and options available when it comes down to content production with Angular. We started with the easiest one, just using one single ng content to project something from a parent to a child component. And then we dug a little bit deeper, right? Using multiple ng contents, and then using any number of things that we want to project using containers, ng template, and everything, which you don't have to use if you don't need it, right? Again, you can. All of those can work and make sense based on the complexity of what you're trying to do. Uh, but always go with the easiest option, of course. And these tools and uh, techniques are widely used by component libraries, such as Angular Material. If you go to the source code of these libraries, you'll see all of these you know, content children and all of the tricks that we talked about in here. So this give, gave you an overview of uh, all of the things we have available in the framework. If you have any questions later on, I'll be around. My email address is here, Twitter, my blog, the slides, everything you need to know is on that screen. I'll be around today, tomorrow, so feel free to find me if you have any questions on any of this or anything else. Again, my job is to teach Angular, so I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.